I am John Paul Fox, a class marshal from Mather House. And I'm Zach Corker, also a class marshal from the great Mather House. And we are here to introduce to you the guest speaker of Class Day 2004. Our beloved president, Larry Summers, defines the core mission of Harvard University as the advancement of new ideas and the promotion of knowledge. And we all, the students of Harvard College, have embraced this mission every day, every hour, every minute, of, for the past four years. When considering the choice of this year's guest speaker, the senior class committee sought, above all else, to find an individual who would quench our thirst for knowledge, satiate our intellectual appetite, and send us forth into the world with a greater understanding of why we are here. An individual with such capacity is rare. I am, however, happy to announce to you that we have found him. Mr. Ali G has dedicated his life to the pursuit of knowledge and truth. As an interviewer, he is, his ability to ask the hard question has put him on the same level as Ed Bradley, Diane Sawyer, and the much esteemed Arsenio Hall. He has enlightened our world with his interviews of U.S. political figures such as Newt Gingrich, Ralph Nader, and Dick Thornburg. He has also uncovered how David Beckham likes to bend it. In all seriousness, however, this is the man who put the extra Boutros in Boutros 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 Gali. <laughs> Throughout all, Mr. G has embodied an intellectual curiosity and a tenacious pursuit of Veritas that should serve as a model for us all. And now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen of the class of 2004, we present to you the host of The Ali G Show and leader of the West Staines Massive, we present to you our main man, Mr. Ali G. Is now. Is now. Buyakasha. <laughs> Professor G in the house, all right? Big shout going out to the Harvard Massive. I's done a capital H because Harvard is a place, in it. You see, I ain't no ignoramus. Things like apple and orange don't start with a capital letter unless they are the start of a sentence. But some few brain boxes probably know that already, innit? <laughs> my name be Ali G and me represent the UK. U. K. <laughs> Wherever. <laughs> For those of you who didn't study geography, the UK is a place over 100 miles away from here. <laughs> The capital of it is anyone? No, not you, Geography Square. Yes, it's Liverpool. <laughs> Clever and quite fly, if you don't mind me saying. First of all, I've got to say that I was a bit nervous speaking to so many of you. At least, me would be if I wasn't totally mashed. Normally, the only public speaking that me does is to 12 people. And it's well easy, all me has to say is my name and the words not guilty. <laughs> Check it. Me agreed to speak here today because me wanted to talk to the brightest minds of our generation to see what makes Harvard so special. And also because they agreed to pay for me flight over here in a hotel room. <laughs> Sorry to bring this up now, but when you is told that your hotel bill is being paid for, you naturally assume that that includes essential extras like breakfast and special interest pay-per-view movies, innit? <laughs> Imagine my surprise when this morning I was given a bill for $164. <laughs> I 
Me was actually trying to save Harvard money by buying the 24-hour Slutfest packages at $19.99. I mean, I could have paid for individual films at $11.99 each, which would have cost you, young and tight, Backdoor Burglar 2, Backdoor Burglar 3, Campus Confession, Asian Fever, Shaven Buffet. Saw that twice. Cold Mountain, that was a mistake. Backdoor Burglar 4, about 490 bucks. I mean, come off it. Some of it was even research for this. I assure one of the cheerleaders in Ivy League amateurs was wearing a Harvard sweatshirt. In fact, <laughs> hello, darling. Respect. I expect you need a cushion to sit down on, eh? Right? She's an artist. Anyways, I digest. It is a well big honour to be asked here today. To think that so many great people have been educated here, like Lyndon Baines Johnson, or as he is known, JFK. Also, President George Clinton was here, innit, I think. And also the one before him, you know, and William Tell? Is he one of your lot? Probably, and some bloke with a hat. But most importantly, that really fit honey from Star Wars. If you is out there, me'd love to. Natalie, me is staying at the best Western Hotel. He's got a really nice room, although since this morning, they has put a parental lock on the TV. As me stand here today, looking at all of you, on your first day of university, me think, <laughs> me thinks of all the things me can offer you. Wisdom, experience, but most importantly of all, 22 ounces of the finest Moroccan chronic. <laughs> well, that is if the X-Lax works. <laughs> to be honest, To be honest, I usually go at 11 in the morning, but nothing there. In fact, <laughs> me'd appreciate it if one of the medical students here wouldn't mind taking a look. <laughs> Don't worry, it's clean as a whistle. You could eat your lunch off it. In fact, me Julie has. I know you don't mind that kind of thing, does you? Respect. Hear me now. You is the most cleverest of students in America. Some of you is probably brilliant at counting. You know, one, two, three, four. I could go on, easy. <laughs> Others of you will be brilliant at English. I've memorized the entire alphabet, A to X. <laughs> and even be able to spell words like hippopotamus. Incredible. I is also well clever. Me was so brainy that me finished my education six years before any of you at the age of 15. Even the teachers admitted that there was nothing else that them could teach me. <laughs> you students, you has come here from every corner of the US, from the rainforest of Arizona <laughs> to the deserts of Alaska. Some of you has probably never even seen a black man before. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> there is all types of people here, and it's fantastic to see that Harvard is finally letting so many women. A lot of you is probably feminists, or as we call them in England, lesers. <laughs> I agree with you. Relationships should be brought into this, the 20th century. You women out there shouldn't have to do the cooking and the cleaning when you come home from work. You should do it before you leave in the morning, innit? <laughs> also, you women should only have to do half the housework. It's only fair that your mum should do the other half, innit? <laughs> but more importantly, it's wicked that in Harvard, young women and men get to learn so many amazing subjects. Some of you here will have been studying medicine. That knowledge comes with a lot of responsibilities. Remember, 
doctors is well powerful people. You can give life, you can cure disease, and you can ask to see a woman's <laughs> without getting slapped. <laughs> For those of you studying history, you probably learned enough about the presidents, like who was Jefferson? And what did Lincoln give America, apart from the town car? <laughs> Some of you is the best legal students in the country. You would know without even having to think about it how to get someone off a charge of possession. <laughs> and if any of you do, then room 204, Great Western. <laughs> Best Western, isn't it? Just do me a favor, put your ear to the door and don't come in if you hear me shouting, Natalie, play off me lightsaber. <laughs> you was well happy you was brought your grandparents, isn't it? Let's talk about the finances of all that knowledge that's been dropped on you the last few years. It costs $38,000 a year to go to Harvard. Now, I don't know how you lot has earned that, apart from you. And you has earned every penny. But most of you has got that cash from your parents. All you fathers out there, you has made some choices. With that money, you could have bought a top-of-the-range Lexus, but instead you chose to invest in your kid's future. Is you mental? <laughs> if you've got other kids, we obviously don't make the same mistake again, innit? Does you realise how many honeys you can get with a Lex? <laughs> Hello, sweetness. My son's got a Harvard degree. What? Who cares? Or, hello darling, wanna check out the DVD play in the back, all right? Oh, what's that? Ostrich leather. Oh. Not inappropriate, not inappropriate. That was in the balance, that one. So students, give it up for your parents. Give it up for them. Respect them. All right, enough, enough. All right, chill out. Let's talk about the future, your future. A lot of you is probably worried about employment. Unfortunately, most of you will end up getting jobs, especially now you has got the burden of a degree. You is the elite. You'll be tomorrow's captains of industry. Sitting in front of me is probably the next Bill Gates, Donald Trump, and even Ronald McDonald. <laughs> and even if you can't all be Ronald himself, most of you is probably McDonald's team leader material. <laughs> By the way, if any of you ever gets to do business with Sir Ronald, a word of advice, don't mention the size of his feet. Him is well sensitive about it. <laughs> my mate Dave actually met him and him said that even though he may seem like he's always smiling, there's a sadness in their eyes. Because of them feet. All the money in the world, science still can't do nothing. Maybe that's something that some of you MIT nerds can think about, innit? You lot will become powerful people who can change the future. And you need to, because the world at the moment is totally F blank, 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 upped. You know the word, I ain't, I'm being told I ain't allowed to say it. You know, you know, you know, the rude word. <laughs> you definitely know, <laughs> with the whole team. <laughs> Anyhow, you has got to think about the problems in the world, because you has got to sort them out, innit? Look at the environment. In a hundred years' time, there won't be no more rainforests. The ice caps will have melted. Actually, that's in 100 years' time, so we ain't going to be around then, so don't worry about that one. <laughs> but there's other things. Look at the state of family today. Girls is having sex at younger ages. There's an increase in absentee fathers, and more and more people is having affairs. But we shouldn't just concentrate on the good things. <laughs> Believing in something is easy. is easy. Doing something about it is hard. 
actions speak louder than birds. <laughs> you has all got great potential to become great Americans. And remember, America is the greatest country in the whole world, apart from Jamaica <laughs> and Holland. Oh yeah, and Thailand, because you've got all the girls, you know. And probably some others, but you was definitely in the top 20. <laughs> you people is the future. You has the chance to change the world, to actually improve the lives of people, to change, to change the life of the poor. Or you could go to Wall Street and earn millions, get plasma screen chinchilla coat, a series of meaningless relationships with gold digging women who do things in return for bling. Don't waste the opportunity that God has given you. I'll see you in Wall Street. <laughs> Let's wrap this up now because we can feel something moving down below. <laughs> really regretting taking your grandparents now. <laughs> so what is I open to take away with me from this time in Harvard? new friends, different ways of thinking about the world, and as many laptops as my mate Dave has managed to nick from your dorms while you have been sitting here listening to me stalling. <laughs> but I has got ideals too, just like the great civil rights leader, Martin Luther Vandross. <laughs> I has got a dream of little black girls and little white girls playing with each other. <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> By the way, Kofi Annan's speech is pretty much like this tomorrow. <laughs> Im is going to have to come up with a whole new material. <laughs> I look out and I see thousands of people with different hopes. But it's important never to forget where you come from. Because black, white, brown, or Pakistani, <laughs> we all come from the same place, the Punani. <laughs> Jobless, big up yourself, Princeton. Keep it real, West Side. While we're here, it's my pleasure. <laughs> <Is that good>? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he said it all. He didn't really have anything else to say. Exactly. Um, well, it's my pleasure to introduce Benita Liao from Cabot House, Marshal from Cabot House. <laughs> it's my pleasure to announce Katie Takarian, class marshal from Dunster House. Much love to the girls from that spot. <laughs> okay, <But> well. <laughs> We have a little present for uh, Ali J. I um, have a senior class, but we need to wait for him to come back to uh, accept it. So, <laughs> I wonder if he's coming back right now. <laughs> or if he's not. On behalf of the senior class, we'd like to thank you for coming to be our class day speaker. A little picture of all of us. <laughs> I think can, I'll give it to the police officer, he can take it back for you. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I guess this is very appropriate now. Yes. Uh, to initiate you into the class of 2004, we would like you to join us as we toast to you with our first class marshal, Shaka, yes. Nita and I. Um, so. That's beginning to hurt now. <laughs> so. <laughs> Police brutality. <laughs> well, <laughs> <size block. laughs> right, well, here's yours. All right, thanks. <laughs> well, here's to Ali G, class of 04. All right, later. Down on one. <laughs> we'll sort you out with some stuff later on, yo. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> Respect. <laughs>